by doing is to tell you a little bit about the extraordinary person whose dialogue, The Republic, we read excerpts from today. It's hard to overestimate the influence of Plato on the Western intellectual tradition. There is no educated person in the Western world in the last 2,500 years who wasn't influenced in some way or another by the thoughts and by the framework of understanding that Plato provided for us some 2,500 years ago. Plato was an extremely interesting figure. He was born into an aristocratic family in Athens. Some think that he was descended from one of the Athenian kings, but regardless, it's clear that the family of which he was a part were among the leaders of Athenian political society. Several of his uncles had been part of a coup in the government that took place several years before uh, Plato came to maturity. And the expectation of people like Plato was that they would go into civic service, government, public leadership. It was as if he were a Kennedy or a Bush or a Clinton. He came from a family with a long history of political engagement, and the assumption was that he would become politically engaged himself. But interestingly, for reasons about which there are great speculations, Plato came under the influence of a man about 30 years his elder named Socrates, who, in the portraits that we have of him, looked remarkably like Plato himself. <laughs> Socrates was a gadfly. He wandered around Athens and asked people to reflect on their commitments. Ask people to think about what the nature of fundamental things like justice and truth and reality and friendship and love and honesty were. He asked people to reflect on common opinion and to ask themselves what of the things that they believed were well-grounded, and what of the things that they believed were simply matters of received opinion. And in part because of his provocation, Socrates was sentenced to death in 399 before the Common Era, when Plato was roughly 30 years old. Plato attended the death of his great teacher. And he describes the story of the trial at which Socrates was accused of corrupting the youth of Athens in an extraordinary dialogue known as the Apology. And the legacy that the Apology provides is something like the legacy that the Gospels provide for the life of Jesus. It's a story of a person willing to die for the sake of principle in a way that became a trope for Western civilization. So in an extraordinary painting, which you can see if you go to the Metropolitan Museum in New York City, there is a depiction of the death of Socrates. And here is Socrates drinking from the chalice of hemlock, which is to put him to death. Here are his disciples, including Plato, calmly at the end of the bed, and Crito holding his leg. Up the stairs here, which you can't see, are some other figures leaving. But what's extraordinary about this picture is that it was painted in 1787, by one of the artists involved in the French Revolution. It was, in fact, displayed to Thomas Jefferson, who admired it greatly. 
And one of the striking things about its composition is that in some ways it echoes Leonardo da Vinci's famous painting of The Last Supper, where those of you who are familiar with the painting know Jesus sits at the center of the table surrounded by disciples. Whereas that is a story of death for the sake of faith, Socrates' story is a story of death for the sake of reason. And the idea that a life lived on the basis of principle, recorded by disciples who can explain the motivation for that life, the idea that that can influence thousands of years of history and can inspire political change and principled commitment is one of the legacies that Plato left us. 